I like making things and I just and I'm very critical about the line and line of something. I might I might for example, you know, draw this shape half a dozen times and I might just change one part of the curve just almost by the width of a pencil line until I'm satisfied with it and know that and feel that it's right. It's not I, I don't rarely do I come in and go draw it out, all right, that's right. Or go back to it and go back to it and go back to it. When you get your final template, mm -hmm. do you work off a template then or is it still all done by eye? No, no, no. I work off a template. It's um, I build up a whole process. These are these are just um, these are just some patterns, for example, you know, and every piece has a pattern. You build up all the components. You start with a start with a, a basic, uh, what we call a master or a standard pattern, and then you build up all the other components to it, and you put in all your sort of registration and important information. And that at the moment, um, our technology is pretty low because it all has to be hand cut. But I. I do think I create things like these. Um, these are my little patterns, for example. And I'll put that down on the leather, and I'll cut round that. And that's instead of drawing it and so on and so forth. What is this process that you're doing now? Oh, this is uh, this is just the base for a little bag that we're making called Olympia, and this is the beginning. The backing is board, and under. Between the leather and the board is a um, high density um, foam okay. and that just gives it a bit of subtlety and a bit of uh, dimension. And then this is, uh, this is just the base of the bag. This doesn't have any foam on it so I'm just putting some glue on that and I'll just um, trim these little corners and it's just turning and folding the edges. So I'll just take that and I'll just fold that over the board so that we get a folded edge on the bag all the way around okay. mm -hmm. so it, protect, it covers any of the any areas around the outside here there'll be lining go on that that'll all get folded over mm -hmm. and then what they call an interfacing so it's just preparing all the components as we go along um, the leather comes in various thicknesses so I have a machine called a skiving machine that we... A what machine? Skiving. Skiving. Yes. <laughs> Not skiving off, skiving. Um, strange word, I know. Um, that thins an area of the leather that... Say, for example, on this you can see... Oh, yeah. This is the leather and it's thinned that down. This I've thinned that down because I don't... I want a finer edge right. on the edge. This will actually go on the inside here. Um, other areas you'll, you'll thin it down for fo to, to be able to fold it more readily because mm -hmm. the, the leather comes the leather that I use usually is between between 1.4 millimeters up to 1.82 millimeters so it just becomes too thick and bulky right. to fold so so where do you get your leather from we actually uh, import our leather directly from a company in Italy it's vegetable tanned leather oh, yeah. um, and the, the do, there are two types of tanning processes one is vegetable and one is chrome tanning chrome tanning uses uh, <coughs> is generally used and creates leathers that you often get in the garment industry and it creates a softer more supple leather um, but it uses heavy metals such as chromium uh, whereas vegetable tan comes from, uh, is based on the original ways in which we used to tan leather, and it uses uh, bark. It's a bark, so it's a natural, basically, it's a natural process, and it's, I suppose, more environmental.